Both speakers are speaking on the subject of prayer, but from different passages of Scripture. I'm going to invite Abby to speak in a moment, because Abby is speaking from Luke 11. It's a continuation of our journey through Luke's Gospel. So I'm going to read the passage from Luke 11 before I invite Abby up to speak. So we're in Luke 11, and it's verses 1 to 13. So it'll be on the screen behind me, but you can also follow along in your Bible if you have one. So Luke 11, verses 1 to 13. It says this. One day... Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children... How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let's make Abby feel really, really welcome as she comes up to speak this morning. Good morning, or good afternoon, as it's just turned the afternoon. I'm going to start today with a very important question. Do you like gifts? I love gifts. Do you know anybody who is good at giving gifts? I'm asking this because buying gifts is something that I both love and hate. If I know what somebody wants, it's easy. If I don't, I can't think of anything worse than wandering around the shops, picking up random items and just hoping for the best. And you can ask my dad because last Christmas was the first year that I didn't buy him socks. In this passage, we can clearly see that Jesus wants to teach the disciples how to pray. It's something so important in our faith. And Jesus takes this opportunity to lay out the perfect plan for prayer. But what seems more important than the words we say is our attitude to God and the heart of the Father. You see, God wants to give us good gifts. He wants to be there for us to call out to. But we need to trust that God wants to give us these things. God is a good father. He isn't stingy, he isn't mean or selfish. He is the God of love and generosity and blessings. He has good gifts for you. He has good gifts for his children. Sometimes we can struggle to think of ourselves as God's children. It can be hard. I know that when I don't feel God's presence, I can think of him as distant and with very little connection to me. When my days start getting too busy to pray, to reach out and to connect with God, I can feel him becoming more and more like a distant relative than a father who wants to spend time with me. And the reality is, God hasn't moved anywhere. I've become so filled with worry and stress and deadlines that I begin to forget how good God is to me. I begin to forget that God's my father. And why do we do this? So many times in the Bible, God's people turn their back to him. They deny that he is their God. They deny that he is their father. And they pick something or someone else to look up to. We are constantly searching for fulfillment in the places that will never get it because we struggle with the idea that God can be so generous. I know that I still struggle to see that God can be good to somebody like me. 
I don't always think of myself as deserving of all the gifts that God wants to give me. And so I reject them. I reject him as my father. And as important as I think my opinion is, I can't change who God is. I can't change the status of God. Jesus clearly tells us in this passage that we can't call God Father, that we can call God Father, sorry. And that means that God is always our Father, whether it feels true or not. My difficult days don't stop God from being my Father because he doesn't change. And this doesn't mean that God will and can give us, he can give us everything, but it doesn't mean that he will. He can answer all of our prayers, but he doesn't mean that he'll answer them in the way that we want. It hurts when the desires of our heart receive a no when we ask for them. This doesn't mean that we're asking for bad things. Healing, salvation of a friend, a job opportunity, even the end of this pandemic. But he's not trying to trick us. He isn't trying to lure you in with the promise of good gifts only to give you a scorpion instead of an egg. Our Father wants true deep, meaningful connection with us every day of our lives. He wants to transform our lives. He wants to walk beside us. When the answer is no to our prayers, we don't know why. It hurts. It hurts. But it's not a trick to deceive us. We don't know his plan. We can't say what God is going to do next. We don't know why. We can ask God for many things, asking for the kingdom to come, But when we don't receive it, do you still trust God? Is he still your loving father? Or do you turn your back on him in the hard times? Because you can't bear to ask him for something else and get a no in return. Does the answer to your prayer change your view of God? Does it give you disappointment when he doesn't give you the things that you ask for? Does it make you feel like you've not gotten something off of your birthday list? That God hasn't paid attention to your list of requests? In the passage it says, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? We can give good gifts, but so often I have to remind myself that I don't really know what I need. When I look back on all of the things that God has given me, they are definitely not what I was praying for in the moment. They have been good gifts. They have been so much better than the things that I needed. And I can pray knowing that God wants to give me good gifts, but sometimes instead of taking that beautiful present, I decide to give myself something that isn't even half as fulfilling. I can so easily forget the goodness of God. I can easily feel like God doesn't even want to talk to me and doesn't even want to listen to me. That's the opposite of the truth. In fact, Jesus even calls us to pray to our Father. He wants us to gain relationship and connection with God. Do you see God as a loving father? Do you see him as somebody who wants to give you gifts? Or do you feel like you have to earn his love and attention? Do you feel like you have to earn the things he wants to give you? As well as forgetting that God is our father, we can forget how much of our time spent praying to God is about getting to know him as well. Prayer is for many things, and we can see here that it's a call for relationship and friendship with the father. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the gift of the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gift that God wants to give us, himself, the Holy Spirit. Jesus doesn't just stop at teaching us to call to our Father, but even goes on to talk about a friend giving food to his neighbour. And I'm so glad that Jesus includes this story It's so good to see how much better of a friend that God is than an earthly friend. Imagine you've had a long day at work, you've just settled into bed, and one of your friends won't stop knocking at your door asking to give you food. Jesus says, because of your shameless audacity, he will surely give you as much as you need. While the friend gives reluctantly, Jesus tells us that God gives generously. If this friend can surely give you as much as you need, then how much more will your Father in heaven give you the gift of the Holy Spirit? God will triumph any earthly gift. And the heart of the Father is so much more generous than the heart of a tired man. 
Here is the gift of connection, love, and intimate relationship with our God. The creator, the one who put the stars in the sky, the one who calls a storm to calm. How incredible is that? That is a gift that I want to receive. That is a gift that I know is one of the desires of my heart, to be able to be invited by God to come and know him. The great news is God is not a God of payment and debt. We can't earn the gifts that he wants to give us. That takes away the point of a gift. Imagine having to pay everybody for every birthday gift that they give you. It doesn't make any sense. God is so much better at picking out gifts than I am. He knows our hearts and he wants to give us good gifts. I can pick out a decent Christmas present, especially if what you're asking for is socks. But God can give a better gift than we could ever imagine. He knows you more than anyone could know you. He knows what you need, and he wants to give it to you. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. God wants to give you good gifts. What is your heart when you pray? Are you expecting your prayers to be heard? Are you expecting the gift of the Holy Spirit from your heavenly Father? He wants to bring us healing, joy, peace, comfort, freedom. I could go on and on and on. Our Heavenly Father wants to give us good gifts. He wants to give us the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Jesus showed his generous heart when he died a painful death on the cross so that you and me could be in relationship with him. The freedom that Jesus offers is incomparable. You will never get an offer like it. You can't earn it. It is a gift, and God wants to give you this gift. So, as we finish, I have to ask you one more question. Will you accept God's good gift of the Holy Spirit? Will you ask him?